hello. Good afternoon. It is a lovely Saturday in July. It's actually been pretty cool for July this week, which has been such a treat. And I wanted to get some stuff done in the yard today, so I thought you might want to join me. I'm going to start back here in the Hosta Glen because it is the shadiest part of the yard right now and it is warming up. So um, we're going to start here and do some weeding and some transplanting and then we will move around the yard and get some other stuff done. So if you want to garden along with me, let's go. Almost every hosta back here is a division from my mom. She has a really incredible hosta collection. And initially when I was starting this out and I just wanted to fill space, I put all of these um, more plain hostas in here. They are green, they're grape fillers. This is about the size they get, a little bit bigger. They spread really well. Um, but I have a nice uh, specimen hosta back here that I can't see because it's behind the tree, so I want to swap these two. This guy's coming out. If you have never transplanted or divided hostas before, they are super, super tough. And although it's not great to do it in the middle of the summer when it's incredibly hot, they're really adaptable, and if you just keep them watered, you can move them pretty much anytime. A lot of people recommend dividing them in the spring when they first start coming up. You can also move them in the fall. But I've been able to move them pretty much any time of year. So I say just go for it. This area stays pretty much in full shade all summer. In the spring, it's a little bit of sun, so this is actually kind of a nice spring garden. Right now, it's pretty much full shade, so as long as I water it pretty well at the beginning of summer, it stays really nice. The hostas are really happy back here. And I did just step on a little one, because of course I did. I don't know if anyone has this. Ow. This is um, buckthorn, it's super invasive. So anytime uh, around here anyway, if you get this, it's really rough to the touch here and it usually comes up in these little seedlings like this and they can be really tough to rip out but the best way to get rid of them is rip them out completely or if they're really tough, you can just cut them here um, so they can't grow anymore but this stuff in this area springs up everywhere so i always try to rip it out and actually put it in yard waste bags and not in the compost um, just because you don't want it to spread around more look how pretty this is see why i want it up front so this guy's going up front. I'm going to take the bigger, plainer guy and divide it, and then we'll move it around. When you are planting hostas, there's nothing super special about it. The soil here is really, really nice where I live. Um, I am just about seven blocks from the Mississippi River. We're on a sandbar here, so... We have really fertile soil and it's really sandy. The chicken run used to go all the way to the garage here when I had more chickens. They had all this space. So this uh, space in the garden is actually super, super fertilized thanks to lots of chickens digging and their waste composting. 
And that's why everything back here is really happy. So all you have to do is dig a good hole, get them in. And then we'll water it. All right. Let's divide this guy. Dividing hostas is really easy. And if you haven't done it before, it feels really brutal. But I promise you, it's fine. They will be fine. So you can see the bottom of a hosta has very thick roots. And when the hostas get really big, they will get these big, almost tubers, and they're really, really thick. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna sh stick the shovel right here and chop right through it. And if you've never done it before, it's gonna feel really intense, but I promise you this will be just fine. So I'm literally just sticking the shovel right here, and then we're gonna stomp. And this is what it looks like afterwards. So we just chopped it in half and now you have twice the amount of hosta that you started with. You could even, if you were trying to plant a bunch more, you could split all of these up if you wanted to. I don't need to right now, so I'm not going to, but you could divide all these into individual plants. And as long as you kept them watered well for a couple weeks and you know they don't get sunburned, then they'll be just fine. Oh. More buckthorn. Okay, let's plant them. Here's a nice spot. Hi, birds. It's literally everywhere. Oh, look at this cute little guy. This is really pretty red stems, which you don't see a lot of in hostas. And he was back here underneath this forsythia, so it's hard to see him. I do remember the name of this one. It's called Fire Island. In order to see his little stems better, I'm gonna move him up front. I think that's enough of moving hostas around here. The sun is moving, so I think it can move over to the west bed over across from me. Oh my God, Eileen. Okay, let's see. This is a Siberian iris that I used to have planted over there. It bloomed once and hasn't since then and it looks like this, so it's going. Let's take some dahlias. We got our stakes. I did initially put a stake next to these when I planted them, like you're supposed to, but I never stake them as intensely as I should right off the bat. That will probably never change. It's just how I roll. People have a lot of different methods for caging their dahlias. You could use a tomato cage, you could use a, you can buy a grid of twine basically that you can secure in all four corners if you're doing more of a cutting garden and you want a more formal look or something that's easy to go down the rows. Because I have these in my beds, 
I am going to be cutting them, but I have a much more informal vibe around here. So they are interplanted among my other plants. So we're going to do triangle cage and then I will continue to stake them as they get bigger. This is the inside of a dahlia stem. You can see there's this hardened little ring and right in the middle of that is hollow, which is why they snap so easily. A lot of times you do not need as intense staking as folks will tell you. You don't need to buy big fancy cages or anything like that. But with dahlias, like you've spent so much time growing these on and putzing around with them and making sure that they survive the winter and all of this kind of stuff. So this is a plant that I actually do want to spend the time on to make sure that it makes it to full flower. With a lot of my perennials and stuff, you know, they're really, really durable. They're really tough and they're fine most of the time. You don't need to really baby them. This is a plant that I do baby though. So stakes it is. This one is a cafe au lait. I have actually never grown them before, so I'm really excited. Hopefully we get some good blooms. You can tie these however you want to. There's nothing fancy about it. Okay, so very simple. This should be enough to keep the cane from moving too drastically if there's wind or heavy rain, which would be great. So this is what we have now. We have some twine. We have three stakes. This should keep this guy pretty secure. And then as it gets bigger, if I need to add other ones, I will. And it'll just look kind of goofy, but I don't care because I want this flower to grow. The reason people do this when you plant them is because the tubers do get bigger as the season goes on, as the plant grows. And so if you're shoving stakes in willy nilly, you could potentially impale the tuber and damage it, which would then damage your plant. So that's why you do it when you plant them. But again, I don't plan ahead. We have another Cafe Ole Dolly right here. So she's gonna get a steak. And this one over here, it's called a uh, Marn. Marn? I don't know. But it should be a nice orange one. You do not have to plan poorly like me. You're welcome to plan better. I can already tell that that Cafe LA is going to get pretty tall, so I'm going to go get some taller steaks. You can, of course, uh, use a mallet to pound your steaks into the ground, but if you're like me, just struggle with it for 10 minutes. It's like, have I done this before? Yes. But can you tell? No. Let's get this arugula out. That is a verbena, I think. Oh, a bean. I planted some, oh, another bean. I planted some beans here and there and here, hoping to sort of hide them from the bunnies by putting them among other things. And the bunnies got most of them anyway, but maybe we'll have a few beans at least. So 
The fun thing about arugula is not only the flowers, but the seed pods, they're very fun. There's some good ones on here. So I'm going to, oh man. I pulled out a marigold. You can just go right back in there. I will pull out one of these and we'll dry it and then we can re-sow some arugula in a little bit. And the rest can go to the chickens. Ladies. Well, thank you for gardening along with me. It was nice to get a few things done and We'll probably do another tour soon, so I hope you'll join us. Bye.